Yeah, what a year to um, to finally make it. It's been about four years of trying for me as a pro. Um, you've called me over quite a few finish lines in those four years. Some of them have been good, some have been very bad. Um, but yeah, to finally make it to Kona as, uh, as a pro is a dream for me. So I'm just really looking forward to tomorrow. Gonna try and enjoy the day, soak it all up, have a bit of fun and try, uh, try and do myself proud. You've done yourself proud already representing the Seychelles. Nick Baldwin, good luck. Ah, uh, there he is, Big Pete. Going in there, good to see you, buddy. 9.50. Hi there, guys. Uh, Simon Briley here with the Seychelles Triathlon Federation and our pro athlete, Nick Baldwin. Hey, Nick. Hey, Simon. We are, if you don't know, we are in Hawaii, Kona, Hawaii, at the World Triathlon Ironman Championships. And um, this is Nick's um, fourth time here, three times as an age grouper, and now our first ever professional triathlete uh, taking part from the Seychelles in the Pro Start, which is the top 50 in the world. Nick, we're one day out, less than one day out from uh, the World Championship race in itself tomorrow, and you've just racked your bike. Tell us a little bit about maybe what's going through your head, what type of preparations you are going to go within the rest of the day today, and what type of time you're going to go to bed, and sleep and time, things yeah, like that. Sure. Yeah, uh, well the day started off pretty uh, pretty easy, I just kind of got up without an alarm. Um, I always try and maximize sleep two days uh, ahead of the race, so got up leisurely, had my morning cup of coffee, and then did my training for the day, um, so that's a 45 minute ride with a few five minute pickups, um, just ramping through the intensity a little bit just to keep the body alert and awake. And I did a 3K run off the bike as well. First K was at race pace again, just to get a feel for how, uh, how tomorrow's pacing is gonna be, hopefully all being well. And then a couple of one minute pickups to be on race pace, kind of fresh hold VO2 type stuff, just to, again, really kind of keep the body firing and I don't want everything to shut down, obviously. Training um, in race week is very light generally, so the volumes come, a, come way down. So it's important just to keep a good amount of intensity there, um, just to make sure that um, you're ready to go on on Saturday. And um, yeah, just put the bike in, so there's nothing left to do other than feed up, feed, rest, take it easy. Um, I'll try and get a good night's sleep, obviously, but you never sleep well the night before a big race. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if I'm lucky, I'll get about five to six hours. That's but, good. <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm unlucky, it could be as little as two to three. Um, but you know, either, either way, it doesn't matter too much, I don't think. I, it doesn't make or break the, the actual day, um, whether it's a great night's sleep or a terrible night's sleep. Mm -hmm. So, um, the haze in the barn, really. Uh, I've done everything that I can do. It's just Absolutely. a case now of executing tomorrow and trying to um, do the best I can. Great, excellent. Now, are you the type of person that will, there's this classic carbo loading, or do you just get in as much calories as you possibly can, even sweet stuff, but maybe not high saturated fats and things like that? Is that is it pretty much how you work? Yeah. Yourself? Well, this is fine. Um, so, <laughs> not yeah, alcohol. It's, um, uh, it's generally a case of getting in a good amount of carbs for me. Um, lots of people have uh, kind of taken up this low carb, high fat diet recently. That's not something that I do, and I, I'm still a big believer that carbs are what you need to perform for an endurance sport, at least. Sure in my personal experience, so that's what I go with. So um, lunch will be pizza, dinner will be um, a bit of pasta as well, um, but I'll keep things pretty simple. Sure. It's not complicated food really, it's pretty simple at this stage. Um, it's not always the healthiest in the days leading into the race, um, but you, you just gotta make sure you get enough calories in. This isn't the time to, um, to kind of cut back and try and strip weight or lose weight or anything like that. You gotta make sure you're well fueled because you're gonna be out there for the better part of eight and a half plus hours tomorrow. Um, so you need to make sure you've got enough uh, enough energy in your, in your system to, to execute that. Sure, no, that's so great. Um, a little bit more of a personal question. Um, you're not traveling with Kate, your fiance, uh, this time. And um, uh, I'm here from the Seychelles TriFed and you know me, but there's a lot of people out there that know you as well. When you're in that kind of dark spot in a race and there's possibly not as many people to, to you personally know, people are just reading your name off your off your number belt and itself, what do you what drives you to the finish line? What actually gives you that mantra or that drive, that focus to itself? Yeah, those those moments I think come for everyone in the race at some point and they're definitely hard to overcome. But I think you've got to each each person who's racing tomorrow has to have something deeper within them to help keep them going when those moments come because yep. the temptation obviously is to, to quit and to stop, to slow down, but you've got to find something within yourself to keep going and to push through that. Because the dark moments come, but 
they can pass as well. So if you yeah. can get through them and, and ride those moments out, then um, there's a good chance things will come good after. But I think about obviously all the work that I've put in over so many years to get here, and that it's up to it's up to me on the day to get the most out of myself. You know, like, in terms of making myself feel good about my performance and um, doing myself proud, of course, uh, I'm representing my family, my friends, my sponsors and Seychelles as well. And um, so I've got uh, a lot of people who are behind me, um, and that's really nice to know, obviously. And you do think of those things when when the times are tough. You do kind of think back um, to all the people who have helped you over over the years to get to this point. And that's what I'll be thinking of tomorrow when it gets tough. Um, the race is bigger than me. There's a lot of people who have invested a lot um, to help make this happen, so it's um, it's a real privilege to be here, and I'm I'm just going to try and enjoy it. It's it can be the most uh, sobering race experience if things go badly here in Hawaii because the conditions are unforgiving. Um, but at the same time, I think if you can have a good day, then it can be the most rewarding uh, out of all the races as well. Absolutely, so I'll try and uh, try and make it positive. Fantastic. It's going to be exciting, guys. You can follow on Ironman.com, live tracking. There's also a Facebook channel. Um, your race number is? 56. 56. Fantastic. And um, Nick is here, as I stressed before, as one of the top 50 men in the world. Not just pro men, but actually men in the world. And has actually deserved to be here um, through the, the fantastic season that you've had. Um, behind you in the 2018 series so fantastic to um, be here and to support you and I'm really uh, I'm excited to see you race and um, to put in everything that you've just uh, you put in for the past year in itself to be here well deserved thanks, thanks Nick all the best thank you